So what else do you think contributes to the success of a, a digital twin after that handover process? Is there any advice that you would give for the owners to, to keep that process you know, alive in, in creating that document that we're talking about? Actually, to, to start the process from the very beginning, to keep in mind that at the very beginning of the project, all the, if it's good for the MEB coordination, it will be good for digital twin. Build the models, make sure that all the models will include all the trades, all the geometrical data, then we can add at the end, when we, before we just deliver the handover, all the O&M manual and the non-geometrical information, yeah. which is catalogs and links to, to different things. Uh, actually, they don't have to be a BIM experts, a client, and that's, that's what actually changed the way we view a digital twin in the last two years, is that clients don't have to be BIM experts to use these models. So BIM experts built those models, so for many years to come, clients can use it easily. So Starting with adding all this data from the beginning will make it really easy towards the end to really invest a little bit more with a week or two work in these platforms, a digital twin like Tandem, to, to, to deliver uh, information rich data for our clients. And if you're an owner out there that's listening right now, this is a subtle push to make sure you're including guidance on this in the RFP from, the, from this onset, because I think the owners who are thinking about this from that point ensures that the bids that come through are considering that as far as how they build everything and how they work together. And if you've set that baseline, you know, for every bid that you receive, or they're thinking about the digital twin as that end state, it's going to be a lot easier in your selection process to make sure that you have everything covered. I'm obviously showing my, uh, my former history as being a proposal <laughs> manager right now. Um, I've received too many RFPs that were copy and pasted from from a prior building, and I'm like, these requirements make no sense. Uh, but I think if is as we get more progressive in the technology that our owners are adopting, it's it's now a requirement to include what your expectations are in that RFP stage as far as the technology and the level of depth that it has. Because if you don't set your GCs up for success when they're going through that bidding process, you might surprise them. And I think also the GCs out there listening, if your owner isn't thinking about these tools and you recognize the value of them, especially if you have a strong relationship with them, that's when you start talking about this and you receive the RFP and you say, hey, this is all great, especially in the commercial world. This is harder on the federal side of things. Hey, this is great. Did you think about this? Because this is a betterment that we can offer your organization that is going to you know, leave you as the owner in a much better position in 10 to 15 to 20 to 30 years versus, you know, the standard RFP that didn't consider the technology at the scale that we're talking about right now. And it doesn't even have to be a new construction. We are working with a client right now that we are laser scanning their facility, MEB facility, and uh, creating detailed models of it to add, to add it to a, a platform, a digital twin platform, so they can keep track of building pro progress and uh, support their future facility uh, management. So it can be an existing building that built 30 years ago and we built a digital twin for it. So it doesn't have to be actually a new construction. And You make a fantastic point there too. And I, and I had somebody telling me about this the other day and I can't remember who it was, but there there is room to make that happen if it's already been built, obviously. The process is a little bit more involved, but like you said, the tools and the technology are available to us now in a way that they simply weren't before. And so if you are looking to take your facilities and maybe half your campus has been built and half of it is not, you can still get that whole facility. It just takes some really focused you know, intention as far as the data that you're capturing. And the amount of data that we have in our BIM documents and all of these tools and technologies now, it's, it's so much more actionable than it ever be, has been historically for those working out in the field and who are building, those who are in the office, for the owners as well, because they have more visibility on the process and the progress of your construction when you give them dashboards and access to that data in a way that they might not have had unless you're you know, having a your, your weekly owners meeting where you tell them the good and the bad news. And, and we've been doing this in, in so many cases, like in, at Endicott College, we documented the whole entire campus with reality capture with drone LIDAR, and then we embed that into facility management. We handed that to the client to support their future facility management and growth for the campus. Same thing with a town, a city here in New England, we documented the whole area, the whole buildings, took it from a, only a small one building to document uh, with a drone LIDAR, the whole city and we embed this to their facility management uh, city uh, database so it can support with this digital twin information rich data their future projects.
Yeah, I think we're finally at the point now where the old entrenched facilities management tools, they still have their place. That's not a full replacement, but there's there's a layer that we can add on to this that adds a whole lot more actionable, valuable data. I mean, do you really want your facilities team on your 10-mile long campus, if there's a light bulb out, to drive to that building, climb up a ladder, get the light bulb out, look at the model, drive back to figure out how to replace it? Or do they pull up the digital twin and go, this is the light bulb that was installed two and a half years ago. This is the model. Model, this is the one we need. And they just order it and send it off and put it in. The it's amount of savings you have there is huge. And you don't have a guy on the ladder twice as much as you would have needed otherwise. So there's a safety aspect to it too. Absolutely. 